The RTM Radio Network. Yankee and the Brit here on a Sunday night. Can you hear this? Ooh, that fancy telephone ring. Hello, this is Richard Lynch. I'm with... Uh, we have an interview with you folks this evening. Yes, you do. Evening. You are live on the Yankee and the Brit show. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. <laughs> You're welcome. How are you tonight? Oh, doing great. Been busy with the farm and all. We are excited to be here with you. What kind of farm you have? Well, I've got a little horse farm, and we grow a lot of hay, and uh, we're getting the last bit of the hay up today, and so we bailed about 500 and some bales today, so that's a that's a good day's work. <laughs> I reckon so. What do you do, round bales? Oh, no. We we do all the whole fashion way. We bale square bales. Oh, don't tell me somebody's got to go up in the hay mound and stack that. Ah, uh, that somebody would be me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, I can remember doing that when I was in the younger days. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, it earns your uh, earns your, your victuals when you get through eating. You get, when you get through work and you're tired, you want to eat, that's for sure. <laughs> you ain't kidding. You ever have a good cold glass of milk before you go up there and work for a couple hours? Well, if I do that, then I'll probably uh, just want to sit there and finish dinner. So I wait till I get through eating, <laughs> get through doing it, then I get that. Oh, I, work, ah. I worked for some people when I was young, and the and the Mrs. Farmer used to Mrs. Marison was her name. She used to make us a great lunch every day: some meatloaf, potatoes, corn, peas, anything you know. And then I'd go out in the cooler and I'd get me a big old glass of fresh milk. And I'd down about two big glasses of that, then go up in the hay mow, and about fifteen minutes later, all that milk was coming back up. Oh, I, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> that's great. Well, it sounds to me like we can relate on that hay thing. Oh, Lord, that's something you don't forget, I'll tell you that. I think I'd be asleep on the hay, never mind being <laughs> sick on the hay. <laughs> uh, where are you folks located? Oh, we're in Bells, Texas, about 50-some miles north of Dallas. All right. Well, Texas would know a little bit about hay down there. That's a fact. Oh, yeah. And good country music. Yes. Well, without a doubt. Especially some of that Richard Lynch music we've been playing. Oh, oh well, thank you guys. Are you kidding me? That's ever since we heard you on Joe Graham's show, The Hillbilly Express, um, been, we've been listening to it pretty steady, actually. Well, thank you guys. We're pretty proud of this new album, and uh, it's had a lot of success. And we get to we get to talk to great people like you guys who who uh, play our music, and uh, it's just a, it's a good thing all the way around. <laughs> that's that's the nicest thing anybody's ever said. <laughs> what uh, how'd you get into music well actually i'm a, a second generation um by that i mean my dad was a, a great country music singer entertainer played all over the tri-state area ohio kentucky indiana so i grew up listening to that that great country music you know people like bell street and conway twitty and and buck owens and merle haggard and george jones and on and on and on so when i got up in the morning dad would be in the kitchen and get ready to do his daily work and uh, he'd have that good old country music on the radio and by the time I was eight years old my dad uh, invited me up on his stage and uh, he well, he didn't invite me he grabbed me and filled me up on the stage and I did an old song back then it was called I Got a Tiger by the Tail and so the crowd was well responsive and uh, and I was bit pretty early by the country music bug so I've been playing with it ever since. Well, it sounds like with all those influences, that's why your music still sounds like it's got some country twang to it. Oh, yeah. Well, in, yes. I, I appreciate that. I, I, I really love great traditional country music, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that really, um, they really miss it, and they want, they're looking for it, and so I'm doing my best to, to keep these, uh, to keep them, them old traditional songs going, and not, not necessarily the old songs. I, I, a lot of my music is brand new music, but it's got that, it's got that real country flavor to it, you know, stuff that you can relate with. Well, that's it. That's what us baby boomers were brought up on, you know, George Reeves and uh, Crystal Gale and, you know, a lot of those old country folks from way back in the beginning. And that's, you know, that's what I grew up with. As soon as I oh, realized what a record was, you know, I started looking through my mom's albums and there was Jim Reeves, for one, was, you know, one of the ones I distinctly remember. And oh, I was, sure. then grew up with all that, and, you know, and I hear your music and it's so reminiscent of that. It's... Uh, it's nice to get that uh, good country feeling again from some serious music instead of this uh, half rap, half whatever you want to call it. Well, I agree 100%. And, you know, when folks talk to me and they play my music and they, they come out to our shows and, uh, you know, we get to meet these people that uh, that come. And some people drive, you know, two, three, four states away just to come 
you know, hook out and spend a weekend or a weekend with us, you know. It's just amazing because there is such a need for uh, this type of country music again. And, and like I say, I, I'm, I'm flattered and amazed that I get to do what I love and, uh, and uh, kind of make a little money at what we're doing. Not getting rich, but we're, you know, we're enjoying what we're doing. And, and uh, you know, we're getting by and we're doing something that we, we feel there's a need for. Oh, yeah, and, you've, and we can, you can definitely tell that you have the heart and soul for that kind of thing. You know, it's just, it's bred into you. You can just feel it from the music. Yeah. Well, thank you. Hey, uh, one of the listeners uh, wanted to know, uh, she says, it's Christine Lewis. She says, uh, when will he be in Tennessee? I can see on his dot-com page that he's all over Texas, but nowhere near Tennessee. Well, we have been in Tennessee uh, a lot here recently. Um, last week, we, re- we re- uh, did some recording um, in Nashville, and then last Sunday and Monday, we were in, in Nashville for an award show. Um, I don't know when we'll be booked again. We usually play uh, we usually play three or four times a year in Tennessee, different places, different locations. You just tell her to keep looking on that website, and, and uh, we'll post something soon, I'm sure. Where do you live at? Well, I live on a farm just about 30 miles north of Cincinnati, southwestern Ohio. Um, been been in and around the uh, southwestern Ohio most of my life. Um, you know, there's still where we live is still kind of rural, and um, you know we love the we love the the farming way of life, the the horses, the hay, the cattle, dogs, and we're lucky we get to live pretty close to how we sing. We love the the great country music, and we get to live in a, a country environment. So I'm pretty daggone fortunate. Well, no wonder we can relate to that. Uh hay mow kind of thing because i was born and raised up there in northeast ohio well what town you know where ashtabula is i do well that's it about 20 miles south of there in a little crossroad called rome ohio wow that's about three hours north of me there that's way up there yeah and i know exactly where you are that neck of the woods i used to drive truck and i've been all over ohio delivering all over the place and i'll tell you what southern ohio is pretty damn pretty down that way it is a beautiful place and you know we're we're pretty lucky to, you know, to have, uh, you know, the environment we're in. And, and heck, fall's coming up and all that pretty foliage around. Hey, you got to love it. Well, the reason I came to Texas was because I lived right there uh, about 20 miles south of Lake Erie. And, you know, that means snow, uh, lake effect snow. So we either got 10 inches or 6 feet, just depending on uh, where the line wanted to reach down to. Well, uh, Texas sounds real good when you start talking about snow, I can tell you. That. Oh, Texas is the most... <laughs> Pretty place in the world to me. I'm like Alice in Wonderland some days. You know, you can wake up and you can go outside and the whole of the lawn can be just covered in purple flowers and then you can go out two days later and there's white flowers, yellow flowers and uh, the wild flowers are just so pretty, you know. Sometimes you can be driving down the road and you'll you'll just be taken by these beautiful, amazing, big, tall red flowers, bright red flowers, you know. It's just amazing. It's so pretty. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, you know, we're in Texas a lot, and, and uh, coming up this year, starting, actually next year, starting the 18th of January, all the way through the month of February, we're doing like 30-some odd shows all the way down in the Rio Grande Valley. So, I mean, I love Texas, and Texas treats us really good, and the uh, the music is, you know, people can relate, relate with the great country music. It's just, uh, when it comes to Texas, we're pretty far out of Texas, that's for sure. Have you done uh, Austin City Limits yet? I have not played Austin City Limits. I think at some point, you know, that probably will happen, or we can we can cross our fingers and always hope to, but yeah, I would love to do Austin City Limits. Oh, that would be fantastic to hear you on there. That's such a great show, too, and uh, my brother lives down there, so I've been around that part of the country quite a bit, too, and it's, uh, man, you just, you just love it you get down there. It's fantastic. Well, I, I have when I've worked Texas. There's a gentleman who lives in Austin, or just outside of Austin, that plays steel guitar for me, and he always tells me what a great country music, just a music overall music scene, how Austin is. And so, uh, yeah, I would love to to work off Austin and uh, city limits and all those areas there in Texas. Cause it's just a a great musical venue down there. Do you have your own recording studio? I had a little little kind of home studio. I really wouldn't call it a home a uh, studio. We got a little something that we we can write demos and different things if we get great ideas or or not so great ideas. We still have a little means to kind of get, get them started. Uh, but no, we don't have a what you call a uh, professional studio here in the barn. But we got a we got a nice little something we can work with. 
Hey, I got to ask you too. I uh, I want to get this in before I forget. Uh, who wrote the song "Hold Your Horses"? A guy named Billy Yates wrote that song, and Billy was a incredible songwriter. Um, I say was he is, and he's wrote so many great songs. He like he wrote songs for George Jones. Uh, he's charted, I think, seventy different songs that he's charted. Wow. Um, uh, he wrote wrote the song "I Don't Need Your Rocking Chair" for George Jones. He wrote that Grammy Award song, um, uh, Choices, for George Jones, and just on and on and on. It's just a, a, and it's a super guy to be around. He treated us really well, produced our new album. Um, you talk about a, uh, a, a wealth of talent, and it's just an overall gentleman to work with. He was a, a great guy to, uh, to be in the studio with and kind of chill around, buddy around with. It just a, turned out for a great experience and a great recording. Yeah, I just got a chance to really listen to that song the other day, and uh, I really wasn't uh, too clear on the lyrics till I took a good listen, and I was like, wow, what a great tune. Well, thank you. Um, I'm pretty proud of that song. I'm proud of that, I'm proud of that entire album. The album you're talking about is our current album. It's called A Better Place. And, you know, country music is really, really diverse. If you think about it, I love traditional music, and there's so many diverse uh, aspects of traditional music. You've got Western Swing. You've got 4-4 four, four hard drive and honky tonk music. You got that good old steel guitar crying in your in your beer music, and on and on and on. And I wanted this album to reflect all the different influences and all the different uh, different things that's influenced my life in it. And so there's really very few songs that's even were somewhat similar on that album. I'm really really proud of this one. Do you yeah, write you some be. of your own songs, or does or do you always have someone else write them? Well, I didn't get any of my songs on this on this current album. Um, I do write, and I have um, I have intentions to get at least one, maybe two, um, on the next album that we are we are currently working on. Um, I, you know, for me, uh, just to put one of my songs on, just to say I put it on, I I really don't I really don't uh, think like that. I I'm more about the song. The song has to be. Just all that for me. I've got to relate with it. I've got to connect with it. And I want to make sure that the 12 songs that make it on my album are the absolute best material that I can put on there. And if I can write something, that's great. But I don't just, I don't just worry about me writing something to be writing it. I want to make sure that the album and the music speaks for itself. Well, if it's anything like you've been doing, I can't see a problem with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Christine says uh, she may have just found a replacement for Blake Shelton. <laughs> I love it. I love well, tell Christine thank you for me. <laughs> well, what she means by that is she was she was messaging Blake Shelton to see if she could get him on the show, and she never got a reply. And you know she was a bit disheartened by it. And so you know we have exactly what we need right here on the show. We've got all you amazing listeners, and we are totally happy with that. And sometimes, you know, we 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 get a bit annoyed sometimes if people don't if people don't reply because uh, well, I don't think that people should forget where they come from. You know, we all we all come from somewhere, and it's people, it's fans, and your loyal fans that put you where you are right now. I guess I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You shouldn't forget your little people. Uh, uh, exactly. You know, when we're done, there's nothing nothing better for me that when we're doing done with a show, if if folks want to stand around and talk or or, you know, sign an autograph or, you know, sign some merchandise or just, just get to know somebody for a few minutes. I don't care if it's, if it's 15 or, or 150 or however many, I will make sure that I stay where, there with them. And uh, I'm just proud to get to know these people and shake their hands and hug their necks and get to know them for a little bit. And, you know, I, I look at it, you know, they work hard and they chose to spend their money to come to one of our shows. That's about as flattering as it gets for me. I really appreciate them fine folks. <clears throat> Is guitar the only thing you play? Well, I, I, you know, that's really the only thing I, I play on the, in the band. I, I, I play rhythm guitar and, and um, you know, I can play a little bit of bass and different things, but really I'm, I'm not really, uh, you know, that talented at that, not talented enough to do it on a stage, so... I just really love playing that acoustic guitar and keeping that rhythm section going, and uh, uh, you know, and that and that gives me an advantage in a lot of ways. You know, I can kind of if I hear a song, I can grab my old guitar, and maybe I can learn it real quick, or if I get influenced on something on the road, I can grab my guitar and uh, write a tune or write some different lines down to the to the metal that comes to me. So yeah, I love my old guitar. Which one of your songs gets the most requests? <laughs> 
Well, right now we the most song the most requested song on uh, on our current album is called "She's Got Me Drinking Again." And oh my goodness, they get up and dance and hoot and holler and carry on. It's like, it's kind of like an old Joe Diffie song. It just kind of make you want to you know stomp your feet and clap your hands and get them get them boots to moving. So that's probably our most requested song. And uh, when we when we do our live shows, but. Our close second would be uh, A Better Place, it's our, our title track of our current album, and we get a lot of requests for that one. Are you uh, are you on the charts at all? Oh, yes, and uh, we're really proud. Um, currently, uh, there's a uh, independent chart, there's a lot of independent charts out there that we're on. The one that we're the most proud of is called Roots Music, and they, they represent independent artists around the world. And um, we are currently uh, at 25 weeks straight at number one with a better place right now. So we're really proud of that one. Wow, that's great. Yeah, way to go. Um, yes, sir. You, you know, when we don't, uh, we don't get into the personal things. We could care less about that kind of thing. If anybody's interested in that, they can always pick up a, one of those busybody magazines or something. We like to get into the important stuff. Like in my favorite words, question he is, wants to know what you drive. You got a four-wheel drive truck? <laughs> Absolutely. I got a big Dodge 2008 <laughs> Dodge Dually, four-wheel drive. Man, that thing gets it done, man. <laughs> what is it with all you cowboys and these Dodge trucks now? Come on. Well, what's a farm boy to do without a big, heavy four-wheel drive truck on a farm? you got to have one. So yeah. I, I make mine work. <laughs> I'm all about that, but get a Ford. <laughs> well, they, my bass player would hug your neck. He always He's a Ford kind of guy. I mean, he, he gives me grief because I don't have a Ford, but that's okay. I like Fords. Do you go out and get it dirty? Absolutely. It gets dirty all the time. Now, see, that's the kind of thing I want to hear about. Some real guys being real people and out there having a real life and getting dirty and having fun. Absolutely. Real on the farm here. You can't you can't do too much without getting dirty either. Either we're cutting hay or pulling something or I mean, it's dirt on the farm. And my wife, she tells me how often uh, she knows she's married to a, a hay farmer because I'm always tracking in dirt and hay to the house and stuff. <laughs> That's so the truck can get it too. That's the way to do it. Walk right in, sit right down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm all about that country life, boy. I wish I could live further out in the country, but you know, if you live in the country and you live in the mountains where I'd like to be with the running streams and all the wildlife, it's going to snow. That ruins everything. No. <laughs> oh my. Well, the Brit, the Brit over here, you know, she's uh, from England, of course, and, uh, you know, she's had snow and cold, and it's always kind of dreary, rainy, not exactly a sunshine kind of place, so I think uh, being in the sunshine over here has really put her in her element now. Well, that, that's, that's all good. You know, when I heard her talk, I knew she was from one of two places, either from England or Ireland. We got to play a show in Ireland uh, with David Frizzell last year. Really? And that same, yeah, that same comment, that same uh, accent was handling it right there. I'm like, either she's one or the other. I know she got to be from one or the other. <laughs> well, shouldn't be Gora. Isn't that nice now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> At least you've not said I'm from London. <laughs> Everybody always says, "Are you from London?" And they say, "No, no, no, I'm from uh, from Derby in the Midlands." And they say, "Is that near Scotland?" Oh, about eight hours away. <laughs> yeah, she. Uh, oh. We did a. What's about? I don't know. We met. We met online. She heard me doing this show, and I don't know what the hell made her listen to the show one day. And uh, next thing you know, a couple years, few. How long was it? Three years, and you finally came over here. Yes. About three years later, the British came back to America, and we let them in this time. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, I love that accent. You know, when when we were over there in Ireland, and uh, we were over there for a week. And some, the northern part of Ireland is almost impossible to understand, but the southern folks have got a, a little slower uh, twang about it, but I can kind of comprehend what they're saying. So, Well, you should hear her when she screams in British. Oh, I, I bet that's entertaining. <laughs> yes, I'm like, that's preposterous! <laughs> You're too that's much funny. Oh, that's great. You've been overseas and played even. That's awesome. Yeah, we had a blast over there. Um we got to do some radio shows, and a, a, a guy named, uh, oh, I can't think of his name right now, uh, the, the, the guy on the TV show, uh, daggone, it just slipped my mind. Anyhow, it come to me. He uh, had a TV show, and we got to be on it, we'll do a couple things with him, and currently we have um, uh, a lot of our videos being played in Europe over there, and that's becoming a pretty good uh, a pretty good source of uh, 
you know, folks playing our stuff over there, and uh, we're charting on different things in Europe, so we're really proud of that. Well, you know, we had the British invasion in the 60s. Well, now we can have the American invasion in uh, England. Absolutely. I'm all about that. That sounds great. <laughs> Bring our country music over there to them. And I tell you what, Americans <laughs> stand out like a sore thumb in England. What kind of horses you got over there? Well, I got a couple quarter horses. I got a paint, got a little old pony, and my wife, she loves her little donkey. She's got two miniature donkeys and a, a full-grown standard donkey, so we got our share of hay burners around here. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, if you if you love what you got, and we do, it's just a it's a great it's a great feeling to open up the windows in the morning and see them out walking around, eating, enjoying a lot. That's a pretty sweet way to live. Oh yes, sir, it is. Just before I moved over here, uh, we had uh, about uh, we had up to seven or eight horses at one time. But I had a quarter horse. She had a thoroughbred, and we had three lipizzaners. And boy, you should see them when they go prancing across the field out there. Just absolutely gorgeous. You know, it's it's really a great thing to be around people that love the love their animals, whether it's horses or cattle or or whatever. You know, being around that agricultural way of life and and loving an animal that's pretty special to me. Your wife seems like a pretty special gal too. Good looking woman seems to back you up and support everything you do. Well, my wife is the reason I'm having the success that I'm having. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Um, I, I've known her about. 30 years, and we've been, been together a little a little over 11 years, and um, we were just talking one day, and she said, you know, Richard, you really should, should record an album, and, you know, I always I always kind of just played live and didn't really decide to ever do that, she said, I'm serious, we need to get, to, get you scheduled, and we hooked up with a guy, with a friend of ours in Nashville, and we recorded our first album, and it really did well for us, and this current album we got now has just exploded with interest around the country and around the world. And it's all because, all honesty, my wife believed in me and the musicians that I play with enough to, uh, you know, insist that we get in the studio and do that. So if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. That's how, that's how amazing she is. Yeah, that's beautiful. And hey, let me ask you this. Do you remember what it was like the first time you got on stage in front of a decent crowd? I do. I was eight years old. My dad threw me up there. <laughs> Oh, way to go, Pop. <laughs> yeah, I was I bit decided. by the country music bug, man. I said, this is fun. I got to do this. <laughs> didn't, he, didn't even bother you. All those people were watching you, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're a kid, you pretend to have a pretty good advantage over everybody else, you know. And if you can halfway sing, and, and I can say my dad was a great singer and well-known area around our area. And uh, the fact that I got to say I'm, I'm Woody's son made, made it so much easier for me in a lot of ways to get started. Now, once, you know, once I had been there, I, I had to make sure that I excelled and, and kept doing you know, what I was supposed to do. But it gave me a good advantage over a lot of folks just because I could say, you know, I'm, I'm Woody's boy. And so that was really something that made me, I guess, you know, a little advantage around, over the other musicians around the area. Do you, uh, you ever get the jitters now? No, it's uh, that has been a long time since I've been um, nervous at a show or anything. I just try to. I'm really confident, and you know, I, I'm, I'm really. I lean hard on the musicians that I work with, and we all, you know, we all got a little sound together. Now, the only time I would be, uh, you know, somewhat jittery if I'm kind of hoarse or whatever. And once in a while, you know, we kind of like get a little sore throat. I, you know, I just kind of second guess. I hope I'm not going to squeak on this one, but <laughs> really, I don't. I haven't been nervous or are jittery in a long, long time on these shows. I'm pretty lucky. Yeah, that's great that you can just get up there and do that. And, you know, that shows in your shows, too, uh, when you come out there comfortable and just make everybody happy and get them singing along and feeling the music. Uh, makes a big difference the way you act when you're up there. Oh, I agree 100%. You know, um, we've got a young lady that, we're, that we've kind of taken under our wings here in southwestern Ohio, and she just turned 21 years old, and she is so interested in, and uh, loves this genuine country music and we put her on our show and and at first you know i could tell she was kind of sensitive kind of scared and kind of you know not really comfortable and it's really nice to watch them um you know gravitate and take that take that seriousness and be kind of one with themselves and she's becoming quite uh, quite fluent on the stage it's great to see that confidence come in these youngsters they still play this good traditional music so we're pretty proud of her so tell us about the rest of your band. Well, on our farm, I have several big barns, a horse barn, and we have a pretty unique situation here on our farm. We have a huge big barn 
that three or four, maybe five times a year, we'll play a country music show in our farm, in our barn on our farm. Um, last month, we had Buddy Jewel. Uh, he's become a friend of ours. He came up and did a show with us. And in October the 14th, we're having Roddy McDowell come to our farm. Ooh. And uh, Roddy McDowell, he's a awesome singer and play. he had all them hits back in the uh, 80s and 90s yeah i the, remember yeah that's, that i'm surprised yeah well i mean we've had we've had people like confederate railroad out here we've had uh, a lot of folks that come out to the bar out to our farm with us and um, it seats about 400 people our barn does and it's it's big enough to where it's a lot of fun but it's still intimate to where if the if the folks that want to come and see our show they can get to meet the artists and and uh, you know, get to meet them and connect with them for a little bit. So it just makes it a great time. Yeah. So, do you have your own band that plays with you and travels with you, or do you just pick? Oh, up yes, sir. As needed? Yes, sir. I have a six-piece band that we travel all over the country with. Uh, I didn't take them to Europe with to Ireland with me. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I do have plans at some point to do that. Um, we're uh, discussing some things right now on, on out of the country. So, yeah, at some point that'll happen. But whenever we play in the states, I just you know I take my uh, the, my guys that I've been playing with all these years, and uh, you know that really makes it a it makes it a lot of fun for me because we have such a uh, you know a camaraderie and respect for each other that's been been playing together for years and it's uh it makes it easy actually that we can do these shows now because we just everybody knows what we're doing each each other knows what we're doing it sounds like you guys would be great in a the studio then you just pretty much look at each other and know where it's going well you know there is some of that we have recorded some live stuff and uh put it uh, live in our shows and done a couple uh cd sales that way so yeah we have done some of that already um but to be an actual to be in the actual studio I, i've learned that these guys from Nashville, that that's what they do. Um, there are such talented guys, and you know you're against the clock. You got to get in there, and you got to make sure that your uh, that your sound is done and your music as well. And so, you know, we just stick with our with the Nashville musicians whenever we do the, uh, the the recording session on our albums. Sounds like a great plan. So you guys pretty much got it all figured out. What's the future got in store for you? Well, I mentioned you know we're, we're real excited about being. Uh, being able to get back in the studio here again with our up and coming album, um, we got that. Uh, we got that. Uh, you know, to look forward to. We've been playing all over the country. As a matter of fact, uh, this weekend we're going to be playing the Georgia State Fair. That's a pretty substantial gig. Um, if you go to our website, you can see a, a multiple p- bunch of places that we're playing around the country. Um, if you just go to richardlynchband.com, you know, bring it up, you will see all the different places, you know, our, our locations. You can see all our merchandise we're selling, all the uh, all the interviews. And, uh, yeah, it's just a, a great way to, uh, you know, kind of get our music out there and uh, to see folks. And, of course, you have a Facebook page. Oh, yeah, and that's, like I said, the Facebook's on there. Um uh, it, it's great. Like last night, we did a show up in um, uh, a little town called Xenia, Ohio, and they had what they call an old, old timers festival. And what it is it was about all the folks with their their vintage uh, farm machinery, and just an amazing bunch of folks. It, it's just a great to be around folks that love that traditional music and have a respect for the country music. I just love being around them. Well, Xenia's still standing, so that's a good thing. <laughs> So you know about Ohio, don't you? <laughs> of course I do. How can you forget a tornado like that? 1974, it was the tornado went through Xenia. Yes, it was. Actually, I remember a lot of 74 because that's when I got into business for myself before I graduated. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things went on in 74. So, yeah, it's kind of hard for me to forget that kind of thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I guess we'll uh, get out of here and let you go. we got a few more of your tunes to throw out here. Don't want to hold you up all night. You're a busy man, an important man, and you got a lot to do, and we can't thank you enough for coming by and hanging out with us. It's awesome. Oh, but we have one last thing to ask. All right. What can you sing for us right now? <laughs> I, you know, I'm a big Keith Whitley fan. I just listened to the Keith a while ago, so he sang a song like, It's amazing how you can speak right to my heart. Without saying a word, you light up the dark. I love old Keith Whitley, so <laughs> I hope that was good enough there. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you kidding me? You're the first one of one of our interviewees to actually do some singing. That's great. Well, guys, thank you for having me. And to all your listeners out there, 
thanks for giving me the cha- the chance to to know to kind of kind of talk and get to know you folks out there. And just go to richardlynchband dot com, and we'd love to see you folks and shake your hand, and hug your neck, and just see you out there on the road somewhere. Well, thank you kindly, old farmer friend, and uh, we'll see you along the hayride somewhere. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks again, you guys. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. 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 She's got me drinking again.